This presentation has been prepared for the resource techniques course given in the Computer Engineering Department of Ankara University. The presentation includes studies and results in line with the problem determined during the two semesters. Computed tomography is important for the medical world in the diagnosis and treatment of many diseases. To speed up these processes, it is necessary to use computer technology effectively. Studies in the field of deep learning, which have gained considerable success recently, can contribute to this process. Providing organ tissue segmentation in these images has long been found in the literature as one of the subjects of deep learning technology. In line with these current medical and deep learning studies, our project aims to make liver detection faster and more effective in abdominal tomography images. The results were observed by working on liver detection with segmentation algorithms in different branches and subjects. Besides, an interface has been developed by us so that individuals far from deep learning can easily work on these algorithms using different datasets and observe the results. You can see the main sources of deep learning architectures on segmentation practices that we have worked on in our project according to the semesters. A more detailed bibliography is included at the end of the presentation. The main reason we use these architectures is that they have proven their effectiveness in different fields. For this reason, we included these architectures within the scope of our project and carried out deep learning studies. In the training and validation processes, we made our comparisons between architectures with dice coefficient and accuracy values. Accuracy alone has not been enough criterion for image segmentation. Therefore, we included dice, which is a coefficient that provides punishment during the calculation of false positive values in our comparisons. We used the Adam function to optimize our architectures. This optimization method, used to balance noisy and unstable data, is very fast and low cost. In our experiments, we used the parameters and amount of data displayed on the screen. The data of patients used in these experiments are anonymous. Liver tomography images, which are at 512 to 512 resolutions, were reduced to 256 to speed up the training process. The experiments seen on the screen are the studies that achieved visible success in the estimation results. Apart from this, some results do not achieve our targeted success. However, some results will not be able to perform enough segmentation, while the rest were exposed to learning disorders such as overfitting or undersampling. The narrative basis in this section is created with the graphs of the architectures and samples taken from the prediction results. If you are interested, you can stop the video and examine the results in detail. UNET is an architecture that has proven itself on the ability to do a lot of work with little data in different fields. It has a highly rising trend among segmentation algorithms. To sum up, the model we studied with 13 patient data gave the best result. In the experiments where you can see the graphics and slice samples on the screen, studies using fewer images were insufficient and also the diversification and growth of the parameters had an adverse effect on an architecture that could work effectively with fewer data, such as UNET. The training graphics in the upper left corner, which we run with the data of 13 patients, gave us the best result for UNET in line with our goals. Dense UNET and ResNet have a very deep layered structure and can increase the training process for a very long time with the existing hardware. That's why a structure that needs to be checked regularly with checkpoints has become more effective. You can see the most successful results in the images. ResNet and Dense UNET need more data compared to UNET due to their layered structure. However, the layered data masking process, which has a low level of complexity, also prepares the ground for memorization. For this reason, these two architectures couldn't reach the appropriate competence for our studies in terms of time, cost and effectiveness ratio on our dataset.
Stagnet is one of the architectures that yielded the most effective results when compared with the past semester of the algorithms we worked on this period. So we just added this algorithm to our comparison. Segnet took a more comprehensive approach to different amounts of data compared to other algorithms. In previous studies of Segnet, it was determined that it is a better algorithm for biomedical segmentation. These results we have obtained support this hypothesis. UNET implements a fully convolutional network and offers a hardcore magnification workflow. However, Segnet includes different sampling techniques. It discusses a change in segmentation processes that can reduce the memory of extraction 10 times more with loss of interruption. For this reason, Segnet's low dice coefficient can give a more effective result if a goal is aimed to reduce the false positive approach. We have developed a desktop application that allows people who don't have coding knowledge to easily train and predict using the data they have and allows them to easily view the results. There is a short video of the main window of the application on the screen. Between the previously submitted report and this presentation, we had the opportunity to work more on Segnet. We have also observed in more detail how other algorithms will have an impact on practice. The situation showed us that Segnet can provide more effective performance and encouraged us to update what we learned. Another conclusion we observed is that accuracy is not an adequate measure for image segmentation. It is envisaged that this situation should be optimized on basic algorithms to minimize the false positive values that may arise and to save the people who will examine the CT image from confusion. Deep learning, image segmentation and fast prediction can cause a lot of computing costs on machines. This process, which is made to make quick and effective decisions in the diagnosis and treatment of the disease, can be useful with more detailed analysis and renewals to be made on the estimation algorithms. Thus, deep learning can find more place in the medical world in practice. If you have any questions and suggestions, you can reach us from the email addresses displayed on the screen. As two people who still learn about this subject, ideas and criticisms are of great importance to us. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day.